Boys, you won't believe it. I finally did it. Finally, we are a Star Powers prize winner. Some of you may have noticed with this week's results, I did pretty well on a certain game mode, and if you were paying attention on Friday uh, last week, yeah, we did, we did all right. We did fairly well. I was very, very excited to see the results this week, but I am not going to waste too much more time. Let's check it out. I'm going to start with top team this week. Top team was uh, interesting, to say the very least. Uh, Dawson, really just a meh game. Nothing crazy. Sisley, who we've picked before, 160. 160 from Sisley, which it sucks for this game mode, but is great for another one, and I'll show you that in a sec. Sisley with 160, definitely have to have him if you want to win this week. You just have to. Bont as well. We took him out. Took him out and he went and did 151, of course. I'm just going to put him in now. Petraka didn't even play that bad. It's just Bont. We had him in and we missed out. We just missed out. Rowan Marshall was okay. He actually ended up being second best at Team English. I was surprised Tim did that well against uh, Nankervis, I think it was. He pretty much beat Nankervis, so fair play to Tim. Just how it seemed to go against Richmond. It just is how it seemed to go. Uh, but Rowan Marshall, not the worst choice. It's the Maxi Gorn one as well that kind of sucks because Errol finally shows up with 132 like what the hell is wrong with you Errol what is wrong with you you are a curse this card in general is just a curse I don't have you in real life you're the only one that I don't have you just like playing well when I don't have you you're just not you're just a nightmare and Maxi you did okay you had a good game but you're up against North man why do you not have a better game? Why do you not have one of your, your all-time games like you were having against the other blokes? All right, fair enough. Uh, you know, it's just top four. We finished with uh, 419 points, ranked 209. So, yeah, not great. This one, obviously, one of the hardest ones to get into the top 10 for. You have to pretty much smash it every single uh, mode, every single category. You have to have the best Ruckman. You had to have Sicily. You just had to have Sicily this week, I feel like, in order to win. Bump. A lot of people have him. He did himself very, very well. And a lot of people have also been choosing Golden. So you would have seen a lot of people succeed with him. But we go to top 18. And a few things I will mention. Some of my players that I've been waiting on to play really well finally did. Luke Jackson, I mentioned... He's been having those games where he just doesn't seem to be getting involved in the position where he's best to do so. Bang, just like that. Number one this week with 149. Loads of hit outs. No McInerney definitely helped him out. He was up against Darcy Fort and Joe Danaher, which although Joe is great as a player and as a forward, he is not an ideal Ruckman. Luke can outplay him. And Darcy Fort just isn't the best Ruckman around. So... Luke Jackson had his way, got himself nearly 150. Jack Zebel, he finally got um, back into the starting lineup, ended up dropping 138. That's what happens when you get a full game of Zebel. He gets himself disposals and gets himself marks just kicking around the back for the most part. So he got himself 138, back to his best form just before his uh, career is over. Golden, back to usual from him. Maxi Gorn, 97. Pretty much bang average, which it's great for top 18, not great for top 4. Here we go. This is where it gets interesting. Dugowie on the ball, 67. What the hell? That sucks. Usually would be the worst performer of the week. No, no, no. We go further down. Nick Martin, 52, tries to top him. Nearly loses to, to West Coast. What the hell, Nick? Where did all your, your prowess go? But even you weren't the worst one for me this week. What the hell, Shay? Fourth worst active player. 40 points. Shay, what are you doing, mate? This is a all-time poo performance. <laughs> Just not good, man. Not good at all. Uh, we had Mitch Lewis in last week. Didn't play well. Now gives me 98? What is your problem? <laughs> Zebel we've had occasionally, but for good reason. We haven't chucked him in as much as of late. Maybe Elliot would have been a choice, but I think the only ones that we really would have picked outside of um, the ones we did were Dylan Moore and Mitch Lewis. Jamara could have been a maybe. Zebel I've tried staying away from more and more, but everyone else. Zach Bailey I probably would have picked as well. So look, we picked all the you know okay forwards that I was happy with. Two good ones here. I'm definitely going to keep these three in next week. It's just the other three. I think especially Shay and Nick. I think these two are going to need a change up uh, for sure. We look to defenders though. And there is now one obvious change we need to make. Bacos out for the rest of the season. That is crazy to think now. Collingwood season has definitely been shaken. I think they do have the players to replace and kind of fill. But Dacos is currently one of a kind. Definitely going to be hard to replace. But we did have Sicily in. 160 points, very, very good. Doherty, 112. 
Dawson 98, Stewart 94, and Sinclair. Probably the most disappointing one with only 83. Could have been replaced with Will Day, who we've had before. Dale, who was good last week. Scott, who's been okay as of late. Redmond's been all right too. But look, I am not terribly disappointed with the Dacos one. I think a lot of people would have had Nick Dacos in. Nick Dacos would have been um, one that probably everyone felt a little bit. And it's kind of shown in the scores, which we'll see in a sec. Midfield is where it gets the most disappointing. Dunkley with 81, nowhere near his usual stand. Only 17 disposals, man. Just get that disposal count up and you're at your normal pace. Uh, Steel, though, by far the most disappointing one. 59. I don't know where that came from. Uh, yeah, just a really disappointing game against Carl Carlton for him. Merritt finally picked him in a week. He played well. 128. Very happy with that. Thankfully, once again, stuck with Bond. Had himself one bad game. I jumped back in with 150. That's good to see. And then Petrucca, 108. I'm not mad at that one either. It is below average, but 108 is something I can work with. It's just the ones like Butters, who I've had in a couple times. He had himself a comeback game, I guess, in a sense, with 130. Uh, Crouch has been quietly good this season, 126. Mills has been meh this season, but he jumped up to 117. Kelly, who's been a sleeper, I think. He's been actually consistently good throughout the season, even though West Coast haven't had the greatest season. Uh, and then Rosie, again, remains a safe pick at the moment. He averages 100 to 110 uh, most weeks, and he does so again this week. So probably would have been good to use him as the safe pick this week. I may have to do that with this coming week now, with Jack Steele probably going out. But we checked top 18, 40 seconds. That is not a bad result, which means like the changes we should have made, Steele going out, if we had taken out Steele, we would have been much better. Shade Bolton with 40 definitely hurt us too. Just really, really hard week. Hard in terms of results, I feel like, more than, you know, actually a difficult week. Because again, Dacos, everyone probably would have had him. Everyone who's been, you know, competitive this year probably would have had Nick Dacos. Um, so him going out with very little points is really not that much of a stress because everyone probably would have had him. It's good that we had Sicily. He definitely helped us out. But how much did we need? We needed 20... We needed to finish in the top 20, 1797. So yeah, literally if we had just chucked out steel, put in Rosie, we get a prize card this week. That's the stuff that hurts. That's the stuff that really hurts the soul. We could have had two different prize cards this week and unfortunately not to be, but let's go over to Star Powers, the one I've been keen on. Here we go. So we're gonna start off. This was mentioned by LJH, who you'll see in a second, one silver Star Powers this week. And I wanna add a quick check. He was absolutely dead on. If you had picked nothing but Hawthorne and Dogs players this week, you would have won. And that's, I think, what LJH did. Sicily would have been his Supreme, got 160. Bont would have been his Mighty Mid, got 151. If he had chucked in Mitch Lewis, he would have seen success there. Will Day had himself a great game, 106. And Tom Liberatore, best for the Epics. So, yeah. If he had just picked Hawthorne and Dogs, which I think is what he's done, a winning week, a <laughs> nearly perfect week. And even if it wasn't perfect, even if he didn't pick Tom Green, Will Day is very close. <laughs> he's very, very close, man. So that is uh, shocking almost to think about. But you can see here we did have our two players. Libba would have been the better pick here. Lewis, who we've picked a couple times, actually ended up being the best one this week with 10 marks. That's very, very good for him. Kono, a bit disappointing. He didn't do as well as I expected. Even though they won, he only kicked himself a goal, had six marks. Uh, did Tex catch him? Caught him up, caught up by one. So Tex, he's slowly catching up. He's going up by a goal each week at the moment. So creeping, but not just there yet. And Kerno's still safely in the lead. But Zach Merritt had himself a good game, 128. And yeah, we had Bond, which was good too. So not a bad week at all. But like I mentioned, Silver Star Powers are also one of the tougher ones with only five people and only 10 spots. Means we finish 83rd with that lineup. 532 points is not bad at all. You can see about 50-ish, a little over 50, 53 points off of 10. So the changes, Lewis, as I mentioned before, we've picked him a bit. Charlie Cameron, of course, has a good game. I don't want to mention. James Sisley, he probably seems like a more obvious pick. Considering we used him in our ultra, which I'll go over in a sec. Yeah, I probably should have swapped him in. Not mad with a will day. And if we kept Doherty in, would have seen us a prize card. Maybe my my thing in my head would have gone off where I've got too many dogs and hawks players. But, you know, it's kind of proven. Doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. You, you just have to pick the best players. And it can be from the same teams. It can. We got ourselves, yeah, Libba here. Uh, Doherty is probably who I would have gone with. Uh, we've got 112 and Sicily. Those are the changes that we would have needed to make to make the top 10. And I don't know where we would have placed, but we, would, we could have been very high. We could have gone a lot higher. So, a little disappointing, but it's okay. We finally did it, boys. This was a amazing week. 
14 star powers. Double points, Sicily? <laughs> 160. Yes, smashed it. 19 marks, 37 disposals. Oh, you don't know how happy I was to see 160 on his thing. Oh, I was so happy. 320 from him. Then Bont 151. When I saw that game live, I'm like, great start to the week. That is awesome. 150. That's perfect. Then from there, we had ourselves a bit of a disappointing one, Kona, as I mentioned, only the 50 from him. Could have gone with Cameron, Walker, some players we picked before, and we saw Mitch Lewis also up there a bit. But 50 is okay. We can live with it because we picked the best young gun. 141 double points as well. All three of our double points players were 141 points or more. That is a ridiculous week for double points players. So we saw ourselves... 320, then 302, and now 282. So altogether, that is more than 900 points off of them alone. So you can tell we're feeling pretty good at this point. So all it took was a good performance from Maxi Gorn, and it got us over the line. And not just over the line, we finished third, boys. We finished third. That is a ridiculous... Ridiculous! A ridiculous finish. I do not know how we managed to get 1,051 points. How lucky I had to be to get there. But man, do I feel good that we did it. We got ourselves a podium finish again for Star Powers this time. It would have been nice to finish first, but you saw... We had some pretty high scoring teams and some high scoring players this week. So I did expect a few 1,000 point performances. I'm glad I was one of them and I'm, I'm happy that I wasn't the best, but third, I will absolutely take. I am not mad at that whatsoever. Oh boys, I'm so keen to see what uh, the prize card's gonna look like. But we go over to team coach tips. Do we have round 21? I know that it likes to mess me up sometimes. We do, we got seven out of nine this week. Got the GWS one wrong and the Collingwood wrong. So honestly, I, this could have gone either way. I think I mentioned it um, in the video last week, but Sydney took it. GWS only by 11 points lost that one. And then the shock of the week, Hawks beating Collingwood convincingly at the MCG, I'm pretty sure. Remember when people said Hawthorne were tanking? <laughs> They've gone and beaten what is considered to be the best team of the, of the league this year. Uh, so, yeah. Hawthorne, mightily impressive of us of late. They should be really happy with how they've been playing. But let's go get our prize card, man. I've mentioned it before. Our prize card is going to be a certain player. I have wanted to get uh, this person, you know, a bit later on. But you can see with how many are now being claimed. Uh, we've only got a few left. Butters is gone. Belton's gone. Stewart's gone. And Clayton Oliver's gone. Archie Perkins is gone, which is kind of weird to see. Obviously, it's Essendon. They're a little bit popular, so I guess you can say that. But more Kerno expected as well, so I have to make sure that I get this right. I have to pick Goldstein at this rate. I do not know if I've got another Star Powers win in me this year. I want to get all the North Melbourne ones. I just have to do it. And there we go. My prize card on the way. I picked up the Todd Goldstein. I'm now going to go him and LDU. My North Melbourne prize card collection is completed. Thank God for that. Thank God. Goodness, I do not want to know how devastated I'd be to not get the North Melbourne ones this year. Thank God I want to stop hours, man. I'm really not too mad if I don't get another one for the rest of the year. I finally, finally won a Star Powers game this year. Oh my God. I did not think it'd, think it'd take me 21 rounds to do it, but here we are. We did it. We did it, boys. We did it. Let's see if we can do it again, though. Obviously, we are going to keep going until the end of the season, but pretty happy, man. Pretty happy indeed. Thank you all very, very much for watching this week's video. If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new, become a member if you feel like it. I'm pretty happy, boys. I'm pretty happy, but let's see if we can do it again next week. Thank you all very, very much for tuning into this one. I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye.